Five production number zero five eight three take one. Get ready to match the star, Dorson Bean, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Marianne Mobley, Richard Dawson, and Patty Deutsch as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rivers! Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are you all all set here and all ready to go? Si, 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 Yes. What has happened? Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. It's off center. No, my... Your mic is all funny. You don't make microphones oh, it started the to... way they used to. Yeah, I think the glue yes. has come loose. It's the molting season. Yes. I have to call E.J. Corvettes and get another one there. Listen, have you ever seen a sheepdog that can't see you or you think he can't see you? Huh? I mean, look into that camera there. Which Isn't one? It? Are you sure you can see what's going on here? Your hair is covering your eyes. Cut those bangs and she'll go camera? blind. Her nose is very warm. Yeah, that's <laughs> she's sick. I should walk her later. Yeah, walk her a little bit later. Let's say hello to our two players, Tony Hudak and Marla Gelman. Hello, ladies. How are you? Good. Tony's the current champ. She's won one game. She has a total cash amount of $200 to her credit. And she's being challenged by Marla, who had her first round question, did extraordinarily well with it. It's unusual to get five in the first round. And we'll see how you do with your first round question in a moment or so, right after we present this message especially for you. And you. Yes. Hello there. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Second half of round one, Tony. This is yours. Listen carefully. Dr. Quackenbush said, he says, I want you to know I specialize in bathtub therapy. No matter what illness you have, I will cure you by sitting you in a bathtub filled with blank. That's how I will cure you. No matter what illness you have, I will cure you. I will sit you in a bathtub filled with blank. You got it, my darling. I've got all finished. And that will blood. be a very good cure for you. You are a very polka dots. That's true. That's silk. That's true, too. Very fancy. That's true, also. What did you say? This window has been closed for three days, sir. <laughs> By window nine. Well, we have ways there. of... Thank you. The lady with the red hair is not finished yet. Now she's finished. Dr. Quackenbush said, I specialize in bathtub therapy. No matter what illness you have, I will cure you by sitting you in a bathtub filled with... Cold water. Filled with cold water? What kind of crazy girl are you? Cold water. You must do better than that. <laughs> okay. No, but that is your bad. answer. She said cold water. But I don't think that's going to get her very far. What do you say? Well, I'm, I'm just as glad that she has a lousy answer because now I didn't lose for her. Penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting bath, wouldn't it, Brett? What do you say? Well, honey, what my daddy used to make. Bathtub gin. Bathtub gin. <laughs> I'm smart to say something. Oh, yes, Charles. Charles. What my daddy used to buy from her daddy, bathtub gin. <laughs> <Bathtub gym. laughs> That means her daddy was a bootlegger. What do you say, Marianne? I say I'm terribly concerned. You are? Why? Those two up there are speaking with southern accents, and I'm agreeing with them because I said bathtub gin. Bathtub gin. Got a lot of booze for you, Tony. I will cure you by sitting you in a bathtub filled with... What liquid will cure all ills? What liquid? Alcohol? Chicken soup. Chicken soup. <laughs> That's yeah, very good. Yeah. I want I to ask you, funny. would it help? It yeah, would it help? <laughs> I was talking to him. We'll do the European stuff, you'll do the southern jokes. <laughs> it was an old lady, James. It. Yes. It was an old lady, had two chickens. Yes. One got sick, so she killed the other one to make chicken soup for the sick one. 
Now. <laughs> All right, Fatty Deutsch, are you ready? Um, I, th I think I was thrown off by your accent. Well, let me see. I specialize in bathtub therapy. No matter what it is you have, I will cure you by sitting you in a bathtub filled with... Schnitzel a la Holstein. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> you are a crazy lady. What, what, hello, gin and chicken soup? Yes. Hello, That's gin? That's better than schnitzel a la Holstein. <laughs> it was the accent. You can stop holding up the cold water now. We're finished with the question. What kind of crazy guy are you over there standing there? Same there holding the cold water sign up there. That was a loser. Now we will go to the next one there. Are you ready? I'm ready. What do you want? I think I'll try A again. I was lucky last time. A, who does this? Only one person. <laughs> I wonder who it is. Oh, you. <laughs> this is for you alone. You were the oh, only one she did on match in the first round. Uh, yeah. All right. Because it was tricky. Do you want to sit here? <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You go down there. And oh. Talk to Tony and the others while we're there. Are you ready now? Would you make our reservation in Encino while he's reading the <laughs> <Yes>. question? <laughs> Thank you. Now. Okay. Now, now you, oh. you can't see it oh, anyway, okay. so there's no trying. Uh, yeah. I got good news and bad news. Yeah. The good news is, uh -huh. American astronauts have landed on Mars and have met a giant Martian. Uh -huh. The bad news is, the Martian is blanking their capsule. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hate this pressure. It makes me nervous. That's very good. Oh, thank that you. Very good. Isn't, doesn't she have a quick mind? These seats are awfully good up here. Yes, they are. <laughs> you can see the whole uh, vista everywhere. Well, All right. Programs. Yes, excuse me, sir. You're a lousy tipper. Okay. Now, are you ready over there, Marla? Yes. I got good news and bad news, Marla. The good news is American astronauts have landed on Mars and have met a giant Martian. The bad news is the Martian is blanking their capsule. Eating it. Eating their capsule. Now, Would you show Marla your answer, please, and sing it out loud to the audience oh. so they can all hear it? Curtain up! Eating! Eating! <laughs> so that's six for you. Okay. Now, round two, in, the, in your half of round two, you're going to have to match all six celebrities to stay in the game. We'll see how that turns out right after we talk to you about this. We are ready. Are you ready? Here's the moment of truth for you, Tony. <laughs> Listen carefully now. She's got to match everybody to stay in the game. Okay. One burglar said to the other, Come into the bedroom quick. Not only does this weirdo keep his money under his mattress, he keeps his blank under there, too. <laughs> Two burglars are talking, you see. I got it. Oh, you finish that in a hurry. Dad, okay. Come on. One burglar said to the other, Come into the bedroom quick. Not only does this weirdo keep his money under the mattress, he keeps his blank under there, too. His wife. His wife? <laughs> we need six wives for a tie here. What yes. do you got there? The weirdo's name is Henry VIII. His wife. His wife. There's one wife, Tony. You're off a good start, Brett. Oh, I feel so terrible to be the one to say... Wife! Wife! That's two wives. Charles. That's number three. Wife, okay. Now, you've got to capture these three, and uh, you've got a tie. Okay, Mary Ann. Speaking of weirdos, may we see your answer? Oh, I just hate myself. What? I said girlfriend. Girlfriend. That is not wife, so Marla wins again. Have your wife and wife. We oh, got it, Mary. All of them. Good for you. Accepting you. You missed it by one, but that's pretty close. Tony, you're not leaving empty-handed. You got two hundred dollars, and uh, it's been a real pleasure for us it's to meet you. Been a pleasure for me too. Good, Tony Hudak, ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye. There she goes. How are you? Oh. Take a deep breath, Marla. <gasps> See? Now you're not nervous anymore. Shall we begin? We polled a recent studio audience, Marla. We got their best response to this. Call for blank. Now, the answer that audience gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match a middle one, you get $250. If you match a bottom one, you get $100. Now, three of these ding-a-lings are allowed to help. 
Mary Ann. Call Mary. for Philip Morris. Uh, there's one. Richard. Richard. Call for help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Charles. If you're coming to the restaurant, remember to call first for reservations. Call for reservations. It might... Call for reservations. Number well, three is tough, folks. Don't I mean, it's a better him. meal than a cigarette. Yes. <laughs> okay, call for reservations, call for Philip Morris, and call for help. Call for Philip Morris. Call for Philip Morris. Uh, you really think she's right about that? You know, I thought that too, but you, that slogan has been used in a long, long time. Let's hope it was at that time when you pulled you the really, audience. Are you trying to tell me that I'm old? No, no. Yes. Not at all, no. And I'm not very old. You're not very old either, and you remember it. I, all right, well, that's maybe a good omen. We'll find out if it's up there and if so where. May we see the $100 response? <laughs> Call for me. Oh. What does that mean? Huh? Boy, there are a bunch of weirdos that day. Looking for... Call for Philip... Moritz, 250. Help. There's Richard's answer. Oh, Help me. Help me. The next thing we'll say oh. before I kill again. Yes. <laughs> All right. Last chance for Phyllis Morris. Here's a $500 response. Yeah. So that means, Marla, you now have the 600 and you're going to play for 5,000. To collect, you've got to match one of them exactly head to head. Which one will it be? Richard. Yeah. Okay, Richard. <laughs> Marla. <laughs> Ta da! Marla. Ta da! Marla. Marla. That's oh, enough, yourself. Enough. oh, I feel better now. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Worth 5,000. Tunnel blank. Tunnel? Tunnel. T U N N E L. Tunnel blank. <laughs> All right, he's finished. Now, we ask you to come up with an answer which you think will match his tunnel... Of love. Tunnel of love. Okay. Do they have one of those around here somewhere? Uh, I don't know. Disneyland? <laughs> okay, she says tunnel of love will match you for $5,000. Richard, what do you say? I love you, Marla. $5,600. I know. <laughs> Good for you. Who's that there focusing on down there? My mother, my father, my three girlfriends. All oh, are they all down there? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, we congratulate you. And if you're ready to carry on, I guess we better carry on, huh? <laughs> okay. Just... While she's getting it all together, let's uh, welcome Tim Conley here. Hello, Tim. You know Marla Gelman? Yes, I sure do. Hi. How's Tim Conley? Just fine. Good. Nice to have you with us here, Tim. Where are you from? I'm a native of Southern California. I live in Long Beach. I yep. uh, went to school at the University of Notre Dame and at UCLA, and now I have a wife and a baby daughter. What did you specialize in those schools? I was a political science major at Notre Dame and a law student at UCLA. I see. Okay. We wish you the best of luck and uh, ask you to make a selection here. I think I'll take B. B it is. Here we go. The boss's secretary said to Henry, I think you should be a little more discreet. I stayed late at the office last night and saw you kissing the boss's blank. <laughs> this is the boss's secretary is speaking to Henry. He said, I think you should be a little more discreet. I stayed late at the office last night and saw you kissing the boss's blank. Uh, well, it's a little complicated, honey, so just think about it. What do you mean, who's Henry? What kind of a well, question is that? Who's Henry? I need to know those things. The boss's secretary said to Henry, now we don't know who Henry is. No, we don't know who Henry well, he is. I suppose he works in the corporation. Could be Henrietta. No, nah, it's Henry. He just works there. I think you should be a little more discreet. I stayed late at the office last night and saw you kissing the boss's blank. Oh. That's all we can give you. You're on your you own. I know what I can give you. All right. Oh, what? Excuse me. Do I not dare? 
All yes, right. You can do wait, that, wait, wait, I'm having a bad time. <laughs> this is a $5,000 number here, a little souvenir that Richard wanted. Okay, okay. All right, is everybody ready? <laughs> no. no, you're not ready. No. <laughs> okay, now we come to Tim Conley. The Boston secretary said to Henry, I think you should be a little more discreet. I stayed late at the office last night and saw you kissing the boss's... I can only think of wife. Wife. Wife is not a bad answer. That's okay, Tim. Well, I don't know. I guess she was chessing, checking up on the boss there, there. What do you say? I'm sorry. I pictured Henry, uh, you know, all alone in the office late yeah. at night. It was dark. Right. He thought no one was around. He thought no one was He watching. was kissing the boss's picture. He yeah, loved that's a good one. Yeah. He figured he'd get a raise. Now, Brett. I, the thing I had before was kissing his ring. Oh, his ring. Oh, you changed your mind in the nick of time. What do you say? Well, this may come as a vast surprise to you. I said wife. Why? <laughs> One for you, Tim. What do you say, Charles? I also said a wife. He kissed the wife there. Tim says, wife, I think she could be a little more discreet. I stayed late at the office last night and saw you kissing the boss's wife. What do you say? I've been with this group too long. You have? And I'm going to hear from my grandmother in Mississippi for this. <gasps> you may hear from me, too. What well, do you say? He was really a go-getter. Yeah? Uh-huh. Trying to advance himself in the he, firm, he, was he? He really was. He was one of those, uh, you know... He was kissing know... his picture? Mm-mm. No? <laughs> he was kissing his fanny. <laughs> Okay. Now, you're shall right. We... I'm going to hear from well, that. That's an yes. expression, isn't it? When you're trying to get on, yes, you're just right. always doing yes. that. Yes, that's a, a, a. That should get you out of trouble. With oh, your please friend. get me out yes, of trouble. No, I'm in trouble with her. I said derriere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we are looking for a wife kisser. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a switch here. <laughs> well, you've heard the old expression, kiss my foot. Yeah. This is similar, kiss my photo. Kiss my photo, right. <laughs> All right, so that's two for you, and we'll see how you do with your first rounder after we see you about it. Here we are, second half of round one. Ready? All yours, Marla. The marshal said... Soon as I saw that cowboy, I knew he was tough. Instead of wearing a bandana, he had a blank wrapped round his neck. <laughs> and that's tough. He was a tough cowboy. Instead of wearing a bandana, he had a blank wrapped round his neck. That means he was a tough cowboy. Right, right. Tough cowboy. Right. I'm here to help you, honey. Well, you're not helping. I help you. Okay. Well, give me a chance, I'm gonna help you. Okay, put her right in the slot, and away we go. All right. Oh, we're waiting for Miss... Uh... All right, now she's ready. Okay, Marla. The marshal said, as soon as I saw that cowboy, I knew he was tough. Instead of wearing a bandana, he had a blank wrapped round his neck. <laughs> gun belt? A gun belt. <laughs> yes. I can't think of it. Yes, you say you do go to college. <laughs> Okay, Orson. She says gun belt wrapped around his neck. He was a tough cowboy. He was. Oh, yes. He had a rattlesnake wrapped around rattlesnake. his neck. Rattlesnake. You did? She said she thought of it, but she didn't say it. What did you say? I didn't say that either. You didn't say rattlesnake? But I didn't say what she said. Gun belt. What I said was he had a hangman's rope. You know what that was? A hangman's rope, yeah. Quickly, could... I got you. Oh, okay. okay. What did you say, Charles? I don't know if it's good or bad. It may be good or bad. Who knows? But his nick nickname on the ranch was Skitty. Of course, he always wore a snow tire. Around a snow his tire. <laughs> around his neck. Sort of midland, yeah, right? Yeah. You made that all up by yourself. Right? <laughs> Terrific. The doctor helped me a little bit. Oh, of course. Then we now, had Now, says he was tough. Instead of wearing a bandana, he had a blank wrapped around his neck. And she said gun belt. I'm sorry, Molly, because I said snake, too. Snake. Seems to be the answer. 
Richard? I said Rattlesnake 3. Rattlesnake 3? Rattlesnake so far. Patty Deutsch, what have you got there? I said a rattlesnake with a cameo clasp. <laughs> rattlesnake with a cameo clasp. He wasn't afraid of anybody. He wasn't afraid of anybody, huh? No. And he just wore the cameo was right down here in front. Was That's that it? That's right. Yes, that must have been yes, tasteful. very attractive. I thought so. Well... Okay, so at the end of round one, it's two to nothing in favor of Tim, and round two will occur, but not now. Now, they gotta do this. You will come back. Oh, I will. You will come Definitely. back. Splendid. You make a lovely couple. <laughs> what would his wife say? What would his wife say? I don't know. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get involved. Now, is there something I do for anybody here? Any plugs or anything like that? No, thanks. Fine. Uh, join us next time for Match Game 75. This is Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. <laughs>